Join me today on a golden birdcage on the edge of the world. We're back in ARC for part four of four on the perfect aviary I am Unite the Clans. Thank you for joining me, and if you missed it, check out parts one, two, and three. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to ARC Building Ascended. have to make sure not to say evolved. There's our structure. Have you ever seen anything quite like it? Six polygonal tubes on the bottom, three on the top, and today we make the top look more like the bottom. We're going to build a third of a tube from the top and the bottom, and we're going to do it three times, just leaving a little gap in the middle for gates, as that top section is going to hold a glass birdcage aviary. We are practically done, my friends. It's been a lot of days on this polar iceberg, and I am ready to get out of here. Go somewhere warm and build you something new, and in order to do that, we need to complete this aviary project for the mysterious aviator, who has left us Enid today, a Pelagornis, and a fine addition to our crew. So far, the birds have all been housed out here, my friends, on this frozen, extremely treacherous iceberg. Oh, extremely treacherous. I'm a creative mode man, so don't you worry, guys. I just walk around for these intros. Uh, these are our creatures, Enid. Uh, and, and we've got a squad of Argies and Terras. If you see, I've added um, stairs on the corners with upside-down railings. That's a very small addition and one you guys can do to add some structure. But our metal base looks superb here on the frosty edge of the world. No new sign today, but it's clearly time for the flight deck. We built the darn base. They came on last night and probably had their little party, got their groove on. And here we go, my friends. We will return to the ventilation room. I am so proud of this. I think we did a lot of small details that make this look really exceptional. We got a little orange glow from our forge as we pass through this section. And as we ascend and get a little higher, assuming I chose the right polygonal tube, somewhere on our right will be a glass wall. And there it is. This is the nexus point. Now, it's tricky, guys. Uh, the way that we've designed this, we wanted this to be our mode of transportation to the top of the aviary. So here in this nexus section, we have had to make some changes to the other tubes in order to keep this one perfect and pristine. You can see another tube right there. It should be slicing down through this one and one slicing down from slicing up from below. This little point right here, it should be a nexus and it should be very crowded with pieces if all these tubes were complete and it would make this one impassable. So you have a little work to do on the outside to clean that up or make a small change in the design. Start these these tubes a little further apart from one another and have a little space here in the middle when you reach the top. Guys, I, I'm really I'm really proud of this design. There are so many hours put into it at this point. I'm speaking as the editor and the builder. I made a lot of hard work for myself as the editor. A lot of crashes, a lot of frame rate issues, and the guy doing the building tutorial was constantly burping because he ate too much McDonald's. Unfortunately, that guy is me and I do all these parts. But welcome to the tip top of our aviary, my friends. Today, we get to work on building the glass aviary portion and it's going to be pretty complicated. But hopefully with my tutorial, it will feel straightforward to you and you can shave out the many hours that I had to spend getting here. So, three polygonal tubes here in this upper section. I want to create pseudo-tubes. I want to give ourselves a third of a tube here at the top and the corresponding third of a tube down at the bottom in that next section over. And we're only going to stop them uh, where our gates will go. So I had trouble trying to decide what our overall structure would look like, and I think your absolute best bet is to get as many of these cool polygonal tubes in. They give you the spiral look, and with six of them, the build looks really balanced and sturdy and strong. With three, it looks a little bit flimsy. But with six, you don't have a good spot for a gate. So, hence this. I think we will build down one, maybe one more level. So either three or four levels from the tip top, and the problem is, if we go out, um, if we go down any further, we're going to impede the gates that will give us access to the birdcage on top. So we'll do this from the top, and then we'll head to the place where this would normally complete itself at the bottom, and we will build the bottom section three high as well. But we'll do this in all three sections, top and bottom, and I'll come back to you then. The magic number for this design is 12. Each of these tubes 
has 12 rotations before it returns to its starting point, and you'll build 12 walls high when you get to a perfect point. Um, and that means we have to divide, if we're doing thirds, four, four, and four. So I built each of these pseudo tubes up to a height of four from the bottom and from the top. And now we're going to switch gears and dive into the glass birdcage. We begin here at the bottom with a upside down hexagonal pyramid. Uh, we're going to use these triangles, the pyramidal ones, uh, and we're going to build a simple shape here at the bottom, and it's building off of this where things start to get complicated. You can see a perfect straight edge coming off of this piece. We could of course build up with the same pyramidal triangle, the hexagonal pyramid triangle that we just used, but if we switch and use the corner piece, that is a perfect fit and I love this my friends switch it and do it this way and then come back to the left a sloped wall would do this job that is the same shape sloped roof is the same shape as the sloped roof but instead of giving us vertical and horizontal lines we get a diagonal which looks amazing with this design so we're going to take this pattern we're going to build with a roughly square shape off of each of our six triangles and then fill the space in between them with more of the upside down triangles and it's as easy as that, guys. I think we can definitely build up two levels before we run into any difficulties, but rather than forcing anything in here, what you really want to do is follow the shapes that are being given to you. And at a certain point, we're going to stop and just build a floor, and that will be as far out as the birdcage goes. It won't reach all the way to the furthest edges of these spires, but um, we're going to use them as our guide as we build up. And the coolest part of this, it seems like we're going to be able to shift everything in our design over by a bit. So we're gonna move these right angle triangles here and snap this one upside down. And now we have a diagonal line that continues through from the second to the third layer. I really like how that looks. If we're able to maintain this and keep this shape, I'm gonna be very happy. We have now built up three complete levels and I did so in the method I showed you. I think this is probably where we are going to stop with our birdcage. We're gonna build up three and come off of the floor, but I'm going to try to see if a fourth level is functional, but I don't think it's gonna be. I've tried this many different ways, guys, and I think every piece we have here except a wall is either going to clip like that, or we must change the overall shape of our birdcage so it spirals and twists. You see this next section of polygonal tube cycles away from us too far, and we have a really nice shape for our birdcage. So I think from here, most likely we're gonna build up with glass walls and try and create a shape just like this on the top so that the two can meet. Uh, from here, I think our smartest bet is to build that floor. We'll throw these triangles in the corner, squares everywhere else, and I will see if this works as the first floor of our aviary where these amazing flying creatures can call home. With our floor complete, we are going to strip back the top layer of our pseudo pillars. And actually we'll have to remove one or two more of these pieces. And now we are going to build a little half hexagon platform that will extend past our gates. We're gonna put gates right on that point in the middle there. But first we have to clean up this pseudo pillar. We have to make it look like it supports this little platform and it all ties together nicely. So let's play around with some shapes and see what works. Don't you love when it works out beautifully? Uh, one regular triangle in place of the right angle one, and another. And we'll probably have to put another on the right side. On this side, we'll come in and we'll, we'll do a sloped wall. One more here. And that completes it. On top, we will add a gate. Excellent. This gives us a way to end our pseudo tubes and it makes the gate itself look a little bit more supported. It strikes me that now is as good a time as any for part four's uh, meditative moment. Um, in the first video I, I talked about, it's good to just appreciate that we're here and we get to do this and I get to make videos and interact with you guys again. And I like to take those moments one of my favorite traditions um, from the kind of videos that made me want to make videos was watching uh, Corrales build things in Minecraft. And I, if memory serves, he'd always start those videos with like a... Something like that. Wasn't there like a, a deep breath? 
Um, breath is one of my, the biggest things that's changed about me since the last time you guys saw me. It's a powerful tool for me now when I get sick, when I'm exercising, I am a much better breather. I use it to change my body temperature. And when you have a big project, taking that moment and just bring it into your body and bring it out. And then you can get right back to work. Excellent, guys. I hope you are enjoying this build and you're having as much fun as I am with the Ascended building system. Things just keep working out perfectly, and I love it. I am not used to it, having been an Ark Survival Evolved builder. Uh, oftentimes, pieces just wouldn't go where you want them. And now... Now... Yeah, perfect. See? That is perfect. Are you guys enjoying this as much as I am? And how has it changed your arc dreams? Another important question. I like that we have hexagons on all our gates. We need to get uh, the rest of this interior done. The only change, we're removing these squares, making them triangles, removing the triangles, and making them squares. And of course, we take down the pseudo tube one notch. Or two. So squares off the one wide section and triangles off the two wide section. And I think that's going to be quite nice. From here, we're going to build towards the center. Now, I think we'll probably put triangles on our squares and squares on our triangles. But uh, you can tweak this for whatever suits you. This gives us a hexagon shape in the middle. Actually, we'd have one no matter which way we did it. That's the beauty of arc, uh, but you can change its rotation ever so slightly if you do it the other way. I think this is gonna work for us. The most important thing at this stage, guys, we're gonna take this shape we've made at the bottom and we're gonna build it at the top and hopefully simply connect walls between the two parts. This section down here, we are going to use for a feeding trough. So at the moment, we're gonna close it off. And this is gonna be our flight deck. If you want, your birds will live right here on this piece of floor. And if you wanna access this glass bowl underneath us, you should probably do it using your tubes. We built these for navigation. We built these for travel, that is their purpose. And we may have to make a small tweak here just to make it easy to get in and out of this tube from the flight deck. But I think it's gonna work out really neatly for us. This piece comes out here, and I think if we simply change the, the next piece below from a sloped wall to a type of roof, I think that will make a nice simple path to get up to the platform. So this will be how we get to and from our aviary flight deck. Uh, this goes all the way to the room at the bottom, and it goes all the way to the tip top of the build. So this comes out, and we'll try, whoops try a couple of different that's fine we'll try a couple of different pieces here to see what makes this transition easier just so you don't slip and fall to your tragic death every time you try and use these polygonal tubes seems to me that this plus this is going to give us a safe bet it it clips in without causing us an issue or does it? Yes, it does. Excellent. I think that is really simple. We're going to have uh, walls or um, open door frames all along the sides here to make our cage. And one sloped wall right here should close this off neatly. I think it looks great, my friends. The pseudo pillars on the bottom go up nicely and support our gate frames. We still have the challenge of how to end the upper ones, but we now have three gates and a beautiful glass bowl structure in the bottom. This is the start of something good. We'll recreate that structure at the top and then hopefully line up all the pieces. Should be easy. We begin with uh, the top creating the same shape we had at the bottom. It's just a simple hexagonal pyramid, and we always build squares off of triangles and triangles off of squares in this build. So what you'll want to do is use the two corner pieces, same as we did below, to create that angled diagonal line. Now in this phase of the build, we will pick the same direction that we want our slant to go in, and we're going to start up at the top and hopefully try and end up on the same set of snap points. But uh, by the time we reach the bottom, we can connect up 
to our gates and everything below. So we'll try and follow the frame of the structure as we go. And that means once we get one of these in, we should be able to get the other. But we'll come through now with the alternated piece. And it's going to go here, here, here. Oh, this is great. I love when it just snaps together. And here. And then we'll be able to, hopefully, yeah. Triangles. Or something I resisted. I did a lot of square builds for a long time. These triangular shapes are all powerful. All right, guys. So here we go. That's actually pretty easy. If that's going to work for me. So let's figure out what that would unlock then. If we come back and build off this one. I want to grab the bottom of it. No, that can't be right. Uh, which means we must need another triangle, one that comes out like this, and then we switch like this. That's a really neat way to do it. Okay, that is how I wanted to do it. All right, so hopefully this is going to work out neatly. Now we'll go find our next step is going to be building upside down um, sort of isosceles triangles, and that is so neat and tidy. It just matches up exactly the way it's supposed to. I love it, guys. We're building an egg. This geometry doesn't just work on the polygonal tubes, it works on the entirety of the design. And we can continue these patterns around, it's just that easy. Once you find it, just don't let yourself get lost. Just know the pattern is here. There you go, perfectly aligned, edge on edge. You see it happen every time. Stick with it, and if it's not lining up, realize you made a mistake somewhere, and go on back, because just watch my pattern, watch my rhythm. Arc is kind of about that sometimes. You just, you just get in that groove, at least with me with creative building. It's a different game. There's not many people who play the game quite like I do. <laughs> oh, look at that. It's sweet magic. But then when I play like this, I unlock things that everybody can use. And that's how it was with the last arc. I'm hoping that's... Oh, what a burp. McDonald's coming back at me. Uh, but that's how it will be with this one, I hope, as well. So what don't we have here? We're missing a triangle piece. And I have to be honest, it took a while for me to <clears throat> figure out that the best way to do this thing is layer by layer and to try and follow these spires. Um, I spent a lot of time <laughs> trying to brute force things or to force one shape in another and it just kept coming back to haunt me. This one should go right here. Perfect. And then we're basically done with that layer. Is that right? Oh, how beautiful. Okay, now how things probably aren't lining up. They usually don't between uh, top and bottom. Welcome back, my friends. The build is looking quite good. And now we are going to build our walls. That will help us tell if everything is lined up neatly. And if not, we'll figure out how to fix it. You can, of course, go with the regular greenhouse wall. I, on the other hand, want as little structure in here as possible. So what we're going to do is the widest of the double door frames. And we're going to put a greenhouse glass door inside and we'll open it. And hopefully uh, the structure looks as minimal as possible and as close to a simple bird cage as possible. We'll build them all up to a height of three and the walls will either be four or five tall by the time we're done. Now I would like to come through with these greenhouse doors. We'll try them in every slot and open them up probably to the inside. I think that's going to look best. And hopefully they let in enough light. They let in more than a wall, it seems to me. There is less going on than a wall. So I like these when you want maximum light. Of course, outward opening works. That's all right. And they can also open inward if you so choose. I think this is my preference. We're going to be able to hide lights in the little nooks where these doors meet on the flat sides and opening them in seems to suit me. What I do have to test is whether any of our birds can fit through this space. I'm very curious to know. So you may make a tweak in this design simply to keep everybody in and go with a different door shape. But I like this. Or go with walls altogether. That's another option. Don't let me tell you how to build your bird cage. We built in the most natural way possible, but it doesn't line up, guys. Our ceiling is on a different set of snap points than our base. Alright guys, I've come to some decisions about the roof. It is currently perfect and there's nothing wrong with it, but we're out of 
uh, steps. We're out of, uh, 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 we've come out as far as we need to come out. So either we come out again and we come back in, which is problematic because we're going to run into this, or we strip back this layer. And I'm going to do that right now. And I will show you what we'll do next. All right, guys. So let's try this now. Let's come up to this height and we're going to bring everything down uh, by... Ooh, ooh, okay, right. To do this, we need ceilings. <laughs> so we're going to put in some uh, quick triangle ceilings, and we can take these out in a second. And we'll just do this. We have a basic dodecagon, and then we should, should be able, with one layer, to build out and meet what we've made so far. The easiest way to do that is to figure out we need this one to be doubled up. So... Let's go from this one, and we're going to build out like so. And we'll come down, building off the bottom of it, and then that should be it. If we come in with our greenhouse ceilings, and they wouldn't naturally snap there without a ceiling. Of course, we're learning our lessons. So we'll put this away, and we'll grab these little ceilings, and pop them in, and then we'll see. Will you go now? You will go now, and you're kind of in the perfect place. So that is what we needed. This part goes together incredibly easy. It's what I like about this build. I'm going to actually, this video is getting, this is UTC the editor speaking again. I, I get, this video is getting beefy, guys, and I want to keep it tight and short for you. So I'm going to cut out a couple of things. I replace all these greenhouse walls above us with door frames. Um remove all the excess ceilings that we use to place these walls and then i go in and i actually try out a couple of big gates for the gates that go on our aviary itself and i end up not going with them but i'll show you little clips of all those things as i'm talking now and now i have completed this section up at this level so it's time to get to all that stuff and i'll come back to you to work on our polygonal tubes uh we're gonna uh, the reason that i left these open is because uh, I didn't want to obstruct our gates, but I also want to uh, capture as much of this beauty of this structure as possible. And it's all, to me, it seems to be all in these amazing, unique spirals and anything in behind. Even these vertical lines that make up this birdcage type design, I'm not sure they're doing us a whole lot of good. Uh, I mean, it's neat to have a structure in there, but uh, I think we want it as minimal as possible. Yeah, I mean, that's the last one that's that's going to smoothly do it. So maybe, maybe we need to turn it a little tighter. I'm not sure the secret. Oh, that was elegant. <laughs> I think I finally did it. Uh, a ramp. A ramp does the job. I think this is the one. Okay, so I think that's going to work for us, guys. That is not the most obvious solution, but that works. And this one. I think that's the version for me. You guys tell me what you think. I think we'll do this, even though yeah, it will line up nicely. Well, maybe we do. Hey, maybe we just close these off. Maybe that's all you do in this segment. Where we just go like right there. Boom. Do we need one that goes up any higher? I mean, I really don't think so. It's up to you guys. If you need one for transport, you can use it. I would remove all of this, but for now, I think this is... We're just going to shear it off. We're just going to pretend it doesn't exist. And I think that's as good a way to do it as any. That looks awesome from in here. And nothing is obstructed. That's pretty great. I mean, I think I can live with that. So we have one very important thing left to do. And we need to make room for our creatures. And I think that's going to be pretty simple. So what what did we end up with? Who Who were our crew? Who was it that we were trying to take care of out here in this place? Uh, there. Oh, gosh. Oh, yes, they're here. Good. Whew. I thought I starved them. We need a feeding trough up here. I'll tuck it in uh, right down here or something. Yeah, I think... Okay. So I think our next step, we're going to move this. I'm going to pop down here, and you guys can find a better way to set this up for yourself. But if this is going to be the place where these creatures roost, I'm going to need to set up a feeding trough or two. Uh, so what we'll do is we will put a... We'll just pop a glass ceiling maybe right here, and we'll hope this is good. We'll put this on the side where we intend to keep a few of the creatures. We'll come back with a feeding trough, and we'll pop one. 
right like that. So I'll go break down the one that I have down there with the creatures. It's time to bring them up here and we'll need to put some meat in the trough and set ourselves up. And I guess I should probably create a way up and down. We need tubes for that, I guess. All right, one simple change here. This shouldn't affect anything, but this should open up a way into this feeding trough area. And the feeding trough should be right above your head. So that should be nice and easy. This is one of our travel tubes, so I could take this all the way down to our bunk area, or hopefully, if all goes well in a second, I'm gonna emerge right here with access. So there you go. So we use the tubes again, and that means we can close off this little gap in our ceiling. So that's done. Now we need to get our creatures up here. There were three Argentavises and they need a little more space. And then there were a couple of Pteranodons. They don't need much at all. I think we'll try parking one Pteranodon right here and we'll see if that's enough for him. And we'll put one maybe on the other side. All right guys, we'll make a little similar platform on this side for Argentavises. All right, there are a million ways to do this, but I'm going to hope that that's enough. We're going to try and put two of each bird on each side. I'll try and bring them up here. Uh, I've got to head back to the original base and find those saddles. And I forgot, we also have a Pelagornis, but you can, of course, just park things down here. These perches are just for fun. So we're going to get the birds up here, and then we have one final step, and that's adding some color to this magnificent uh, design. I'm excited to do that with you guys. Let's go. I do have to admit this may be a bit of a tiresome new <laughs> method of travel. It's cool that it's secret and it's cool that you don't need a ladder or stairs or anything else uh, to get between the levels of your build. But if I had to climb up and down uh, to get all my creatures, well I guess there's whistles and things in this game aren't there? But yeah, just one more look. How cool is this little room we made? I put a lot of thought and effort into this. That is great. Come on through. All right, back in this little bunker that we start at, I'll make a treacherous escape again. Challenge, design, and build an aviary tower. We're well on our way, and we have saddles. They look like they've been colored. That's nice and thought out. We're just going to escape right along the ice bridge. Once you know how to do it, it's cool. It's kind of fun to have a treacherous base. I always like that. And let's head down to these creatures. All right, I think these guys look pretty superb. We've got some for you two as well. What was it? Buckwheat and Eddie. So we'll get you guys set up there. One. Oh yeah. All right. So I'm gonna have a little fun. I haven't been. I've been building. I've just been grinding away at this <laughs> crazy, crazy design you guys see before you. Yeah, a little more art than arc, but uh, it's definitely arc. And I hope you guys enjoy. We're going to have a little fun. Fly these creatures around and get ourselves all set up up at the tip top. Let's start with uh, four eyes. Oh, huh. nailed it first try. Oh yeah. Yeah, do I remember which one I did? Yeah, it's this one right here. This is our main chute. Let's head down to the feeding level. We'll get the new feeding trough set up and I'll show you just how easy is this where it was? Hey. <laughs> yep. So I perform a couple more trick landings, guys, and then I tweak the platform for the RGs. I make it a little bigger so the three RGs stand on two hexagons, and then I bring the pteranodons up. I realize they can fly through double doors, but I don't bother changing my design, that part's up to you, and that they're great on walking up and down the spires. Then I add another triangle for them, so each pteranodon's sitting on two triangles, I think really that's it guys. We add in a little bit of lighting around the place. I do some custom lighting, greens and oranges and blues, and I try and make this thing kind of look like sunset is going to linger long after sunset is gone. And I light up the Argies and I light up the Terras, and we add in sort of blue and red lights, one on either side of the door. 
I kind of, when I'm done with that, I decide this thing doesn't need paint. The aviator, the famous aviator, requested a golden bird cage in the sky, but this thing is just wait for sunset. Guys, the whole thing shimmers. It's magnificent looking. Uh, my partner walked in and went, hey, it looks good in gold. And I went, that is not gold. That's sunset. So we're just going to leave that as is. One last real moment when I actually finish the project. That's so cool. That's so cool. Okay. I can't think of what else I could possibly add to this. I think that's it. I think I just need closing credits. That's done. That's a wrap, son. Let's hit it. Hit record. Send. Send it home. Guys, thank you so much for watching. It feels amazing to be back in the world of Ark and building with you again. I so hope you enjoyed this special building series, a four-parter on this magnificent aviary. The perfect aviary. And with the spirit of Bob Ross still deep in my heart, I thank you guys with love for watching. And uh, I promise to see you in the next video.